Hello, uh, I'm Dwayne Harris with Intermountain Allergy and Asthma in Draper. Uh, this is mid-April, which means that we're at or near the peak of the tree pollen season in Utah. Uh, Intermountain Allergy and Asthma is a certified pollen counting station, the only one that I know of in Utah. We're part of the National Allergy Bureau's uh, network of collecting sites. Um, so if you go online to intermountainallergy.com, you'll see the, the most current pollen count, and that comes from this building up on top of the roof, and we'll show you that later. So we get a lot of, uh, or I get a lot of questions about the pollen count. How is it done? What does it mean? Most people, when we show them how the pollen count is done, are kind of surprised at how low tech it is. Um, the most important thing about the pollen count isn't the equipment that you use, it's the, uh, the knowledge and the experience of the counter or the person who identifies the pollen grains. So I thought we'd take just a few minutes and go over what, what's involved with doing the pollen count. This is Pollen Counting 101. Pollen um, to start with, the pollen is collected on this little device. Now this is a spring-loaded holder for some transparent rods. Um, with these rods, we coat one side with a silicone gel, and then this spins under the, the bottom of a, a machine up, up on the top of the roof, and we'll show you that. And the pollen grains that hit the edge of the rod stay there, and you can identify them later under a microscope. Go ahead. Come up with me. Let's, let's go up to the roof and see where we collect the pollen. Go. Okay, we're up on the roof. This is a one-story building. Uh, you can see pretty nice view from here, actually. And this is the roto rod that we use to collect the pollen. So underneath is the little spring-loaded uh, device that I showed you in the office. As it spins, these little rods come out and impact the pollen grains and then hold on to them. So this is what we look at under the microscope. So it has one of the little translucent, transparent rods on a microscope stage. We stain it and then it goes under the microscope and you can look and see the pollen grains and hopefully identify which ones there are. And right now I'm looking at a bunch of oak and a cottonwood. Counting the pollen can take an hour or more. And that's in, in addition to staining and, and bringing it down from the roof. So it, it tends to be a little bit of a labor-intensive effort. Um, we want to show you some pictures of the pollen that, that are very common now. I wish we could get a photo right from the microscope but we'll show you some pictures from a textbook that we have. So this is a, a reference uh, book that we have that shows examples of the common pollens. This is cedar, which is the, the most common, the, the most abundant pollen at the moment. Um, other examples, this is a, a pine type pollen, uh, and, and these others are all different tree pollen. Okay, to, uh, to wrap up, um, we, we do the pollen count generally from late February to, um, to early March, all every day through um, late October to early November. That's usually when we have significant amounts of pollen in Utah. The tree pollen is seen first, again starting early in the, in the spring or late winter. The trees start, are done pollinating usually by the end of May. Grass starts pollinating middle of May and is usually done by the middle to the end of July. And then the weeds pollinate in the fall and are usually finished by the, the first to the middle part of November. Uh, and uh, if you wanted to see what the, what the most recent pollen count is, go to intermountainallergy.com. We always post, we try to post it five days a week. Um, the pollen count that you see on our website will always be 24 hours delayed. So we collect the pollen for 24 hours, we read it in the morning, we send the pollen count out to the news stations, to the other allergists in the area, and we put it on our website. 
So the pollen count that you see on our website will be the prior day's count. Keep that in mind.